Hey there, Home Labbers, Rich here. I've collected a pile of different software tools over the years that helped me in my professional life and my home lab. And in this video, I'm gonna share five of them with you, share why they're valuable to me, and maybe even valuable to you. For many of you Home Lab veterans out there, you'll know most of these tools well, but for those of you who are new to working in IT or new to Home Lab, these tools will make your life easier. Let's get to it. Let's get to the first tool. If you're working with Linux or remote command lines of routers, switches, and so on, and you're on Windows, you need a remote command line tool. I would be remiss if we didn't start off our list of tools without recommending PuTTY. PuTTY has been around forever. Like, I can't remember a time in my professional life that PuTTY didn't exist and the website looks like it's fresh from the 90s. PuTTY provides remote access to hosts running SSH and Telnet, as well as local serial connections to devices you have physically connected via serial cable. PuTTY is indispensable for anyone on Windows needing to connect to remote command lines in consoles. Another reason PuTTY is great is that you don't need to install it to use it. The software can run straight from a USB stick without needing to modify the computer you happen to be running it on. PuTTY has a ton of configuration options and tweaks to suit the hosts you're connecting to, but you typically won't need to make any of those changes to use it. Just type in the host name or IP address of the system you want to connect to, choose the connection type, and click open. Nothing simpler than that. Along those same lines, if you're a Windows 10 or Windows 11 user, you can install WSL or the Windows subsystem for Linux on your PC. It gives you a native Linux environment installed within Windows, and they have a bunch of Linux distributions to choose from. I'm a big fan of Debian. It's the best. Prove me wrong. Anyway, it's literally the best of both worlds for people like me who need to exist in Windows but work a lot with Linux. It's replaced PuTTY on my work and home computers, but PuTTY will always be with me on a USB stick for the times I can't modify an OS. Okay, next tool on our list is the Advanced IP Scanner, which also doesn't require to be installed to run. This is a really simple IP address scanning and host discovery tool that with just a few clicks can scan the network you're connected to and show you the devices that exist on it. The simple GUI gives you a list of all of the hosts the scanner found, attempts to discover and show you their host names, the manufacturer based on its AWI, and their MAC addresses. This tool is great for the situation where you connect to a network you're not familiar with and need to discover or get the lay of the land in terms of the devices on the network. Like I mentioned previously, Advanced IP Scanner doesn't require to be installed to use it, which again is why it lives on my USB stick of tools. As an alternative to Advanced IP Scanner, I also need to mention Nmap. Nmap is a very well-known free and open source utility for network discovery and security auditing. Nmap is a network scanner on steroids. It's super powerful, uses a variety of novel ways to detect clients on a network, will do deep port scanning, and so much more. Nmap is a staple of mine on Linux machines, but it's more complex and involved to use. In short, if you're looking for a deep scan of a network or deep discovery of clients, use Nmap. For a quick discovery and view of a network, use Advanced IP Scanner. Both have their place. All right, moving away from network tools, one of the things I end up doing way more than I ever expected to is build USB boot sticks from ISO files. Gone are the days of the CD-ROM, but ISOs are still the preferred method for delivering installation media, and for that task, I use Rufus. Again, super simple tool that's completely free, has a portable version that doesn't require to be installed to use, and will turn practically every installable ISO into a bootable USB install stick. I use it to install ESXi, Linux, Windows, and basically everything that goes on bare metal. All you need to do is insert your target USB stick into your PC, launch Rufus, choose your source ISO and destination USB stick, and hit start. Another alternative to Rufus is called Belena Etcher, which is also free and works similarly with the added benefit that Etcher will also burn .img files to an SD card or USB sticks as well. I use Etcher for flashing my Raspberry Pi's SD cards. It's easy to use and has a nice simple interface. You just select the file you want to flash, your target device, and press flash. There's also a portable version of Etcher as well, so pick it up and add it to your toolkit. Why use one over the other? Well, I've had issues with Etcher turning ISOs into bootable USB sticks, but never had issues with .img files for Raspberry Pi disks. Rufus does a very reliable job of making USB bootable sticks from ISOs, but won't create Raspberry Pi boot SDs. All right, moving right along, I use a lot of VMware virtualization in my home lab and in my professional life, and one tool that has always helped me out a bunch is RV Tools. RV Tools connects to VMware ESXi and VMware vCenter servers and pulls in a ton of information about the environment. Practically anything you'd want or need to know about your virtual environment will be provided to you via RV Tools. Info about your VMs, your virtual disks, networks, snapshots, health, and so much more. And it will export all of that or a selection of that information out to a CSV file for you to throw into your favorite spreadsheet of choice and crunch the numbers. If you need to get a full understanding of a VMware virtual environment and you want a full view of everything going on, 
use this tool. It's great, free, and portable. As an added bonus for using RV tools, you can take that export and feed it into Graphar. Graphar takes those RV tools exports and turns them into a beautiful report of all the data with graphs and more. It's completely free, and if you're concerned about using their online version, they make a local Docker container you can run yourself. Trust me on this, anytime you can take a complex dump of data and turn it into a sexy report to show your team or your boss, do it, it's a win. All right, this leads me to the last tool for this video, one that if you haven't heard of yet, I'm not sure where you've been, and that's Notepad++. Notepad++ is a text editor that runs on Windows, but it's not just any plain old text editor. Notepad++ is a source code and text editor that supports numerous programming languages and markup, and while I'm not doing much of any coding, I use it on a nearly daily basis for editing text, JSON, XML, configs, you name it. I can't tell you how many times I've pulled down a cert from a cert provider and had to change its encoding to make it readable to Apache, and Notepad++ is indispensable for all manners of text manipulation. No, it's not MS Word, and it's not going to help you write your term paper, but this should be your go-to text editor in Windows hands down. Oh, did I mention there's also a portable version as well? Cause it has one. Throw that on your tools USB stick while you're at it. Notepad++ also has community plugins you can install to extend its functionality even further, and one recommendation I have for you is to install the Compare plugin so you can compare text files together. It makes comparing router configs and other changes and differences in text documents together super quick and easy. It's replaced the use of Beyond Compare for text comparisons for me. I've got links to all of these apps down below in the description, so grab them and add them to your tools. These are only a few of the most common tools that I use on a nearly daily basis, and if you're interested in hearing more about the others I use, let me know. Speaking of VMware ESXi, check out this video here where we walk you through the installation of VMware ESXi start to finish. If you're looking to get going with virtualization at home, start here.